the next thing, so probably the last thing really, is to do an update. And really that's just a case of um, doing this command every now and then. But it has to be done after the um, main Gen 2 repository has been updated. So if I run this now, there shouldn't in theory be any updates to come in because everything's up to date. All I've done is added new packages. Um, looks like there's a news item I've got to read as well. So as you can see, there's no updates. And let's do quickly look at this item. Okay, again, that's something that's happened in the past. So for a new system, it's unlikely to be of any use. So I'll just mark that as red. Um, so what I need to do is to use time uh, sorry, Emerge Sync, and that will synchronize the local repository again with the latest one that's available on the internet. And there is a chance that some of the packages are just installed. For example, it could even be Chromium. Um, have got an update and will be recompiled and reinstalled. So it generally doesn't take too long if it hasn't been too long since the previous sync, which was only a few days ago. So yeah, that's fairly fast. Okay, so that's all successful, return code zero. So now if I rerun the update command, let's time this one. Um, let's see what updates there are. Okay, so there's no updates, so that's, that's quite a good thing. Um, now there are a few extra things I can show. Um, I've already shown that there's the Gen Tool Kit to install, which gives you um, things like eQuery, which is beneficial. So for example, eQuery U for the use flags of Chromium. Oops. And it shows you all the use flags that are set and those that are unset. Um, there's another one that's quite useful called um, EIX, which is like an indexing or database of the um, repository. And that can be useful to search the database and also to um, check for any inconsistencies with the um, make file and the package.use file. So if I install that, which it's doing at the moment, Let's see, this seems to be taking quite a little while actually. Don't think it was that big a package. Okay, yeah, looks like my internet's decided to drop out. Let's 
abandon that and try it again. So it looks like my internet's completely collapsed. Okay, it looks like it's really slow. It's coming down, but it's really slow. It's interesting how this um, works if it's more than one file it won't show the download progress but if, as it's one single file it is actually showing the download progress on the emerge screen so clearly this mirror that it's chosen is extremely slow right it's got there in the end Okay, that's done. So what you need to do is you need to initialize the database and that's just performed with EIX sync. And what it does, it just generates the database based on the current um, repository. In fact, it's connected to another server, but there should be barely any changes because I've just synchronized. Um, but what it'll do after this, it will create a new database uh, which is done and the next time I update rather than doing a merge sync I'll do an EIX sync and it will um, download these or it will sync the um, repository and then update the database uh, now means I've got access to several other files here um, as you can see um, one of the most useful one. I think the EIX installed is one that's good for searching um, installed yeah there's some options there for how you do the search and so on um, it can be a bit quicker sometimes and rather than using for example emerge search um, say in boss so that takes a little while well, perhaps not a little while on this machine. Um, uh, is it all I've got put next? I must admit, I don't use this that often. Um, put. Let's try it on its own. No, it does need something. Minus A. Okay, yeah, so that's all that's installed. Um, so that could be quite quick. Um, the one thing I do use it mainly for is EIX test obsolete, and that just looks at your, as I say, config files, looking for anything that doesn't look right. And I imagine. Okay, we have got some issues there, but generally it highlights them um, in these, in between these outputs here. It's saying that installed packages with a version not in the database or masked. Okay, well, the world didn't do an update, but it's not generally the world command, update world command that I use. Um, I use a much more comprehensive one. Um, some people might think it's a bit excessive, but I've found that it seems to be quite reliable in getting updates and additional updates and even forcing rebuilding of certain packages. 
Um, so what I use in addition to these, um, just cross-reference. Cross yeah, sorry, yeah, I've just realised this doesn't include the updates. You need to add an update to this. This is probably why it's missing those ones that are mentioned with the Dev Python and Firefox. So this should pull those in now. Um, but I'll show the extra options that I use. So you can see this is taking a lot longer now because it's checking for updates as well as just flags that I've changed, the use flags. Yep, so you can see there's going to be a lot of rebuilds there and there is a few updates and the other packages that are affected by those updates are being rebuilt. I can't remember what the red arm, it might be a false rebuild and the R just means that something's being re rebuilt because of uh, another package that affects it. So I'll do note to that the other packages that, uh, sorry, the other commands that I add into here is um, new use. In fact, I think new use is um, superseded by change use, but I put it in anyway. Um, with BDEPs, I can't remember what this does exactly, but it stands for with binary dependencies. So maybe it's if you've installed a package that's a binary package rather than uh, a source package looks like I can't quite remember what that does specifically um, backtrack can be useful sometimes um, I normally set that something to ridiculously high um, generally I think the default is 20 and generally I don't really see it go over 20 but just out of uh, paranoia I guess I set that to 1000 Verbose conflicts can give you more information. Sometimes it gives you too much information, so it can be sometimes best to omit that. Um, changed depths is another one that I find is quite useful to pull in a few other straggling packages to get them to be compiled in. And sometimes I use keep going as you've seen me already. If something breaks, I want to try and force the rest of the packages to build as much as possible that don't rely on the, the package that's broken. And finally, sometimes I use jobs, which compiles the packages in parallel. So it's not the threads for, per package that are compiled in parallel, but the packages themselves, I sometimes set that to two. You have to be careful though, because you get a couple of large packages that consume a lot of memory. Um, while compiling, um, if they are efficient in terms of parallel compiling on threads, um, then you could you know, keep getting into problems with lack of memory and either going into swap, which will actually slow down the build, or just running out of memory completely. And when you activate that, you won't see each, um, all the detailed source compiling. You'll just get a summary for each package and its status while it's compiling. So if I rerun that, uh, what I've done there with, oh yes, change depths, I've missed out a dash. So the output will be similar, but it'll be a little bit more detailed because I've specified verbose conflicts. And it will probably pull in a few more as well. Um, this one pulled in. It doesn't say us because we didn't specify verbose. But there's probably 20 or 30 there, I guess. And because of the extra options, this could take longer to resolve. Um... Actually, I 
I didn't also put in verbose itself explicitly. So I've put verbose in. I'll just put the V in. Just give us an idea of the package sizes that will be downloaded. Okay, yeah, so you can see we've got some more information about each package now, uh, including the size. <clears throat> so GIMP's not being updated, but it's been reloaded because of something prior to that. Um, several other packages, KDE packages. See, these weren't pulled in before, I don't think. Um, yeah, there's a lot more being pulled in. But as so I've found, I get fewer problems um, enabling the change depths. Um, when I first started using Gen 2, I wasn't aware of that uh, option, and I occasionally got things that broke, which I couldn't explain, but since that changed depth, although it brings in more dependencies to be recompiled, it produces fewer problems for me. So it's something I recommend adding in. Um, yeah, you can see another top level package there, GPM. So the packages I've installed in World, in a different color green, uh, a brighter green. Everything else is has been brought in by a dependency on something else. So Grub's being up or re reinstalled. Um, LibreOffice, Thunderbird, Firefox. There's quite a few changes now. Some long changes are going to take to um, update. What I'm going to actually do is because I'm going to rebuild Chromium, but without the LTO, I'm actually going to make that as a global change. So I'm going to edit um, portagemake.conf. I'm going to switch off the LTO by specifying um, right. Well, taking basically taking this out the warning flags and the LTO. So if I make a copy of this, it's probably the best thing to do. Uh, and take that out. So it's not going to use LTO at all. And I'll, oh yes, I'll actually remove it out of the use flags as well because there might be packages. If I can find them, here they are. I think there was an LTO, yes, there's an LTO specified here as well. Um, by doing this, it's actually going to force anything that had that LTO flag to not use LTO, so it's going to bring in even more um, options. In fact, I might, I might leave that for the moment. I'll do that after. So I don't think, for example, Chromium had it. Uh, in fact, we can use eQuery to find out. Um, yeah, it has use, so find out what packages have a use flag. So LTO. And you can see Fire, oh, it looks like Firefox has got it. Oh, uh, Chromium did have it. Okay. Query use of Firefox. Oh, yes, it has. So they'll get recompiled anyway without LTO. No, sorry, with LTO. Um, yeah, I think I'll take that out. Uh, it just means that the compiler and um, well, Chromium will be built as well, rebuilt. In fact, what I could do is do eQuery um, use GCC. I'll leave that in there because I think, like I say, that's probably a good place to keep LTO um, because it's the compiler. You want the compiler to be running as quickly as possible. Yes, it will take longer to build, but especially on a source-based distribution, you're compiling stuff all the time. You want you want the compiler to be running as best as it possibly can. So what I'm going to do is going to add this to package.use. 
um, package dot use. And that'll be down here, I think, as it's sysdev. Yep. Oh, I'll put that up there for some reason. Sysdev GCC. I'll add in LTO there and then remove it from make.conf. So this will affect every package. And at the moment, it will just be the compiler that's built with LTO. And it might be a good idea maybe to add in the other LTO flags, the with LTO flag, um, maybe for glibc possibly, so that that runs more efficiently. Then, of course, that will affect everything in the system because that's what every package has to go through um, to get access to various things on the machine. So now if I recall the update command, um, prior we had 157 packages to update. Let's see what we're going to have now. Now I've got jobs two set. Now that there is an issue because I've got some big packages going to be built concurrently, that's probably not a good idea. Although I've got plenty of memory on this machine, it's going to swamp the CPU with um, double, at least double the amount of jobs it can handle, and that could potentially slow it down trying to switch routine uh, demands for threads. Oh, we've got the same number of packages, so that's good. So obviously the packages that had LTO in were going to be built, rebuilt anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's probably not a good idea to do that. But if I start it off at least, oops, you'll see what happens when the jobs is active, when it eventually starts compiling. And you can see this is all you get now. It just says merging and it shows what it's doing to each of these packages. And once they've built, it will say installing and then completed for each of these packages. So you get a minimum amount of information on the screen, um, which could be quite a good thing if you're over a slow remote terminal to the machine. Um, and you do get a load average printed up down here, which can be useful. There's also options in Emerge to affect the load average. You can limit um, by the number of jobs as we've seen, but you could also say like, don't go over load average one or two or whatever you want to set it to, uh, which can be useful if you're using the machine for something else that you want to reserve some of the um, computational power of the machine for something else. So you can see it's jumped up there. So it's probably been extracting these um, programs or downloading them, extracting them, and it's obviously now compiling. The fans just come on on the machine, uh, and therefore the load average has gone up as well. So I'll just let one of these complete so you can see how it works. Uh, and then I'll abort the build and just take the jobs off or set it to one, and it'll just build as normal, which will be a lot less pressure on the machine. So it could be all these are actually compiling all at once and they could be uh, running a lot slower. And that's another thing, the estimates for QLOP will be effect, affected. So no, we haven't got too many jobs running at once actually. So yeah, the CPUs aren't heavily used. It could be we've missed, oh, we're up to load average nine. It could be there's just single scripts that are running, which would only run on a single thread rather than actually compiling. I just decided to bring in another emerge. It tends to do this. It seems to have some sort of intelligence. So I don't know if it's, although I've told it to do two jobs, it's actually running four at the same time. Oh, it says two, but it hasn't says that it's updated these. And none have completed, so I'm not quite sure how this works, whether they're just being tidied up. They're not actually compiling at the moment. Let's see what else is running. 
There's not a great deal going on at the moment, actually. Well, it's definitely doing something, but not a lot. And I can't tell what it's doing. It's running a merge still. There it is there. Um, we can also run QLOP minus R to see what is running. That's interesting, it's not coming up with anything. I've never seen that before. So R should be what's running. I'm not sure why it's not showing anything. Apparently it looks like it's locked up, which is a bit weird. Right, there's two emerges running just then. Oh right, it's fetching something. So yeah, w, that's what's happening. Wget is running and obviously it would seem that everything else is waiting on that Wget to finish. So it could be why libtool was started because it thought the average has gone down. And it's probably this if this has been updated because that's quite a large package. Yeah, there it is there and it's loading, downloading really slowly. So I've obviously got a bad mirror there. Well, that's ridiculous because that's six hours that's saying. So I'm going to. Oh, okay, it's speeding up a bit now. All right, I'm going to have to find out what mirror that is and um, take that off the mirror list. dot source mirrors dot source dot org so what I'll do I'll leave that downloading because it seems to be speeding up but I'm going to edit the sudo edit portage make dot conf and remove that because that's just ridiculously slow dot src so it's those first four there but the looks of it So let's get rid of that one, that one, that one. Uh, all right, save that. Let's see how the downloads going. 72 minutes so still a bit slow i'm going to abandon that and start it again and it should pick up a, a different mirror
Okay, so I'll just start that off again. Right, let's see how this is going. That's much better. That's just about my limit, the looks of it. So I think that is why that other job started up. It was probably thought the machine was quite quiet. The average had gone down to a certain level. So I presume that's an update being downloaded because it only, we only installed that a few days ago. Yes, it is an update, so that's why it's fetching it. So that all makes sense. So just another minute or so, and then we'll see some action. Yeah, and I guess the build's waiting for this wget to finish because there are other updates that need to be fetched as well, and this one's obviously holding the others up. Okay, that's done, checking it, and it's moving on to the next download, so that's fine. And it's actually started the LibTool one again. So, we, Despite the fact that it says it's merging four, it says there's only one running. So I presume it's probably expanding that file now. And when you're running like this, you can't see the um, what's going on. Uh, there is another file you can monitor to see what's happening. And that's in um, tail minus F uh, file log portage e log. Uh, yeah, summary.log, that one there. No, it's not. No, that's not it. Uh, I can't remember where this is now. Temp. Right, the individual packages, you can monitor the log there as to what they're doing. I thought there was one with the actual merge. Oops. Oh, is it that one there? If I log emerge dot log, that might be the one. So we're fet we're monitoring the fetch log with the download in this window. That's the other one, which is still going. So you can see there's a few updates coming in. Uh, sudo. Um, no, that's not the one I had in mind either, but. You've kind of got an idea of what's going on, but it doesn't look like it's much different to what's going on here. But um, I'll have to try and find that one. Um, but as you can see, the other packages are being... So the first one to complete was in Shorepip, and it was installed, and then that's completed, it's done. So the counter would have gone up one. 
the next one was FFTW and then Libtool and so on. So although Libtool was started after, in fact Linux firmware was the second one, it's actually the fourth to complete out of all of these. And you can see it's number two, but it's the fourth to uh, complete. So that's what happens when you use jobs. So I'm going to stop that and just let it run on its own one at a time. Just because, like I said, I don't want to bog down the processor too much. Um, it probably won't benefit uh, build time at all. In this case, had they been smaller packages, I would have probably gone ahead and uh, let it install with jobs equals two. So it'll be interesting to see how quick Chromium takes the build now. Um, uh, Chromium. Yes, it took six and a half hours, and I think that's way too long for this, this sort of machine. I was, I was estimating more like two hours or so, and Firefox also took longer than I expected. Um... Oh, 20, no, no, that's probably about right, actually. Um, but then that's, that does have an LTO flag, and I've been using the LTO flag on other machines, so that may improve to maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how these times change without a LTO. And like I say, for these final packages, these top-level packages, I don't think LTO is that beneficial. Maybe for something like a renderer, it may be beneficial. Certainly for the compiler, as I've said, I think it would be beneficial. But to have it globally set, it's probably best to leave it unset and then just set it on an individual basis, I think. So that's the build start, the individual build. Uh, unfortunately, the... Um, title isn't showing what's going on. Um, let's see if we can change that. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. Is it Control M to get the Alt M? Can't remember how to get the menu up now on a default installation. My actions. Location settings. Oh, yes. Oh, there was a hamburger there. That's what I want. This menu here. That's it. And then more. Show menu bar with all actions. That's what I want. Settings. Um, I don't think I have to create a new profile, do I? Manage profiles. Right, I think I'll have to create a new profile, yeah. And tabs. Insert program name, is it, I think. Or is it that one? Yeah, that's it. It's got the current file that's been built there because can't see the package because we're seeing monitoring the source um, that's why it's uh, useful to have that up I'm not sure what font sizes would be that looks roughly right that looks too big now actually um, yeah 
I've got to make sure it's at least 80 columns across. So, okay, it wasn't as big as I thought it was. Yep, that'll do. Okay, so we've got another 144 packages to compile and some of them will be big. So it's going to be several hours uh, for this update to complete. Oh well, yes, it looks like that has indeed compiled a lot quicker. Um, like a QLOP. Okay, so it didn't like Chrome got rebuilt, but Firefox is slightly faster. Um, okay, just a minute faster, there's nothing significant. That was five minutes faster, so that's about, uh, what's that, about 20% difference, so that's significant, well, reasonably significant. Um, so let's just check. Chromium, right, that didn't get reinstalled. So I might just recompile that to see what difference that makes, being as it's the longest one. As I say, I expected that to be a lot shorter than six hours. Um, so let's start that one off. Uh, thought that had an LTO flag. Of course it doesn't because it didn't rebuild. Right, okay, let's have a go. And um, when you rebuild stuff, explicitly you have to put the my, minus one in or the one shot command to ensure that you don't get it added to the world well chromium is already part of the world but if you get into the habit of adding minus one then there's never any mistake or liability uh, likelihood of making a mistake so let's see how long this takes then so that has finished after just about five hours um, which is still um, longer than I thought it would be. I just obviously overestimated the capability of this PC. Um, but it is an hour and a half quicker than with LTO on, so it just shows the effect LTO has on on the final uh, time it takes to build. So it's probably about 25% quicker. Um, it was approximately six hours, about an hour and a half actually, yeah, about 25% quicker. So that could be a, a significant amount of time. But again, for the final use of um, Chromium, I'm not sure that extra half hour would be worth it. I don't think the, there'd be any significant um, benefits to having it compiled with LTO that I can think of, certainly on a, not on a machine like this, maybe on a slower machine, but then you'd be compiling it, it would be taking even longer to compile. So that's more or less all there is to show with Gen 2. It's just a case of keeping updated and adding programs by hand um, with Emerge. The only thing that might want to take a look at um, for the future just to get extra functionality is maybe adding in some extra uh, use flags either in make.conf to the use flag list um, and the ideal page for looking for things that you might want added in is this use flag index um, otherwise it's down to individual packages so, for example, if I took a look at eQuery, use flags for LibreOffice, there might be something there that I might want to add. Um, there we go, PDF importing, for example. It's given me the option to do that, or Vulkan support and so on. Um, Java cap. I think there's, it mentions when we installed it, saying that um, if you compile Java in, it will... Uh, provide a lot more functionality is like a recommendation I think uh, there's even one there for KDE and I think that's a global flag so that, that could be useful to help it to integrate into KDE a lot a lot better so thank you very much for watching I hope it's been useful 
uh, information on these videos for you if you've been contemplating installing Gen 2. Uh, give me a thumbs up on the videos and subscribe to the channel to hear more um, about things that I do in the future. Thank you very much. Goodbye.